The Saw franchise is known for the 21st century mechanical torture devices devised by its antagonist, John Kramer, also known as Jigsaw. The traps have become as important to a Saw movie as the gadgets are to 007, or I don't know, like the dinosaurs to Jurassic Park. In fact, the series has gained a little bit of a reputation for its masochistic tendencies. So in honor of there being a new Saw movie out, I've teamed up with fellow masochists I mean, Saw fan, Sarah Hawkinson, also known as Possessed by Horror, to talk about our five favorite Saw traps. We also ranked the Saw movies, so stick around to the end of this video to see how everything stacks up. So for my criteria, how I chose my top five saw traps is number one, survivability. It has to be survivable. So any fake out traps where they actually complete it but still die, not gonna choose from those. <laughs> number two, plausibility. It has to seem realistic, both physics wise and human body wise. Can you really die like that? Can you die that quickly from that? And finally, number three, originality and creativity, of course. I feel like some traps just aren't that creative or they're used repeatedly, like the reverse bear trap, or they're just too similar to previous traps used. So I want all original. I would never have thought about that. Okay, starting with my fifth favorite Saw trap of all time, we have Jeff's trial, specifically the freezer room from Saw 3. So this technically isn't a trap of the woman in the trap. It is, of course, relying on Jeff's decision, and it is technically a test for Jeff himself. And there's a lot of traps like this where it kind of relies on other people or another person. And these typically aren't my favorite because they do seem a little bit out of the person's control. So in this trap, Jeff must face the only witness that saw the hit and run accident that killed his son. And of course he must decide if he will choose to save her. So the technicality of this trap, he must reach behind cooling pipes in order to retrieve a key that will unlock the lock that is holding her up. And this requires him to push his face onto the pipes ultimately ripping flesh off and he has a limited time to do this because of course the in the freezer room she is strung up naked and water is being blasted onto her and kind of creating a popsicle effect so of course this is one of my favorite saw traps it's been one of my favorite traps pretty much ever since i saw saw three however it is fifth on this list because although technically he had a chance to save the woman he still needed that key to enter the next room the only iffy criteria that this kind of doesn't really meet is the plausibility. We don't know how long she was hanging there before Jeff entered the room, and I don't know if she'd necessarily become a human popsicle that quickly. Maybe time had passed. I don't know. We don't know. We also don't know how cold the room is. Maybe it's really, really cold and she would become a popsicle. We don't know, but that's the only thing that I could fault this trap for, is a little bit of the plausibility. Can you find it within you to save another? I came up with five factors to judge the traps on. Is it fair and winnable? Could it effectively transform a bad person? Does the punishment fit the crime? Does it look cool? And is it brutal? My honorable mention is gonna go to the necktie trap from Saw 5. I like that there's a puzzle element the characters have to figure out, and I also like that there's a social aspect, but it doesn't really do that well in any of my five factors, so I'm gonna have to count that one out. So my number five is going to be the angel trap from Saw 3. In this trap, Detective Allison Carey is tested because Jigsaw believes that she spends too much time piecing together the final moments of the dead, and that this has made her dead on the inside. This near-death experience is supposed to make her appreciate life again. The device is hooked into her ribcage, and the only way she can escape is by retrieving the key from inside of a vat of acid, and she has just 60 seconds to do so. Once time expires, the brackets pull her ribcage apart if she's unable to unhook herself from the device. This is a trap that should be fair on paper, only the apprentice responsible for setting it up, Amanda, rigged it by putting the wrong key in the vat of acid, because she felt that Detective Carrie deserved to die. Carrie doesn't really deserve to be tested in the first place. She's only targeted because she's investigating jigs saw. But if someone had lost their appreciation for life, I could see the angel trap being a wake-up call for them. Does it look cool? Yes. Visually, this is probably my favorite trap. I love the distorted view we see of Allison's face through the acid beaker, and there's just something beautiful about the symmetry of the room, the way the colored light falls on her, and the pose that the machine puts her in certainly lives up to the angelic namesake. This is one of the more brutal traps in the series, based on an ancient torture device from Norse mythology called the Blood Eagle. We actually see it go off on camera. They don't get fancy and try to hide it with camera angles and editing. She just gets destroyed by this thing, and it is messy. <gasps> you. 
All right, in fourth place is Pound of Flesh. So the two in this trap are Eddie and Simone, who are money lenders who lent too much money to people who could not pay it back and thus entered inescapable debt. So the technicalities of this test are whoever gives the most amount of flesh within 60 seconds survives, and they are fighting against the clock because during that 60 seconds, screws are being screwed into the sides of their skull. I like this test a lot because it doesn't say specifically how much flesh you have to sacrifice. It's just whoever sacrifices the most and size doesn't necessarily matter. Obviously, Eddie is a bigger dude and Simone recognizes this and realizes that she's gonna have to cut off much more than just fleshy bits in order to win. So what does she do? Sacrifices entire limbs with bones. So an interesting fact about Pound of Flesh is that this is actually a reference to Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. This refers to a money lender who lends money to his rival and making the security for the transaction a pound of flesh if it cannot be paid back. When the rival defaults on the loan, the money lender demands the pound of flesh in return. So another one of my biases towards this trap and one of the reasons why it's in my top five is because Simone is played by Tanidra Howard who actually won a reality competition show for this role. She was in a show called Scream Queens. From Lionsgate and Twisted Pictures, a breakout role in the next installment of horror's biggest franchise, Saw. Saw Six. And Shawnee Smith, who plays Amanda in the Saw franchise, is actually the host of this show. So I just really like the connection, and Tanidra, I feel like, does such an amazing job and was so well deserved of this role. You wanna know the best thing that happened to me after having to cut off my own arm? Is handicap parking at the damn mall? Number four. I'm going more recent for my next trap. Now when I first saw the subway trap in Spiral, I felt like it was something I had seen before, but after thinking about it, it's actually pretty original. The subject is Detective Marv Boswick, who is tested because he gave false testimonies in court to get people thrown in jail. His tongue is clamped to a metal device overhead, and he's standing on a ladder in the middle of a subway tunnel. His objective was to get off the ladder, thus ripping out the tongue that was responsible for all of those damaging lies, and he had until the next train came through to do so. In this sense, the punishment really does fit the crime. We've seen a victim get tested by Jigsaw for the things they have said in the past, for example, Nina in Saw 7. But this is surprisingly the first time a killer has literally gone after the victim's tongue, though I have seen it before in another James Wan property, Dead Silence. This trap really doesn't look that cool, but it is winnable, assuming it's possible to survive something like that. And regardless of the outcome, it's very brutal. Next up, I wanted to rank this one higher, I'm not gonna lie, just because of what it is and how intense it is, uh, the scalping seat from Saw 4. Now this is another layered joint test with Detective Rig being tested while the victim of the trap, Brenda, is also going through her own test. So the two tests are Detective Rig is told not to attempt to save the victim because that is always in his instincts and he is obsessed with saving everyone around him. So this time he must fight his instincts instincts and allow Brenda to suffer the trap. I don't want to say die because I really don't know if scalping would really kill you, which we'll get to plausibility in a minute. <laughs> Brenda, who is a criminal pimp forcing young women to prostitute for her, is attached to a machine which is attached to her hair, which slowly is pulling her hair off, scalping her. And as the mechanism turns, a code is revealed on the back and Rig decides to help her before it's too late. So around the room were evidence photos of Brenda that could incriminate her. So her test was, if a cop comes to save you, you must kill him before he can arrest you. Thus, it is in Detective Rig's best interest not to help the victim for the first time in his life. So it's a little bit complicated, layered tests going on here. There's very few traps, I would say, in the Saw universe that have this layered effect. Obviously there's joint traps, there's competitive traps, there's reliant traps, there's group traps, but very few layered joint traps. <laughs> so although I don't technically believe, I mean, maybe you could die from being scalped. The head does bleed a lot. So plausibility is a little iffy on this one, but I chose it as one of my favorites and in third place specifically because it is just one of the most intense traps to watch. Number three. 
For my number three, I'm taking it back once again to Saw 3, which contains one of the most unique traps in the series, the pig bat. This trap features Jeff Denlin, who can't stop mourning for his dead son and fantasizing about revenge on his killer. While most Saw traps attempt to transform a victim through physical suffering, the pig bat deals in more of an emotional suffering. Jeff is forced to burn his child's old possessions in order to obtain a key with the power to free the judge who let the killer go off easy. If Jeff is unable to do so in time, the judge will be drowned in pig guts. This is one of those rare cases where the test subjects all survive, but it isn't without a major internal struggle. It's also effective, because the goal is for Jeff to let go of his past, and he literally has to do so in order to win. So for Jeff, the punishment definitely fits the crime, but for the judge, not really. He just made a mistake, and he nearly loses his life over it. Now maybe some people will disagree, but I really love the look of this trap. Particularly because we get to see the maggot-covered pigs get brought out on a factory line, dropped into a shredder, and liquefied as they fall into the vat. I love the way the sound design makes this even scarier, and of course, the metal soundtrack adds to the intensity. When it comes to the brutality, I'm kind of split here. It's not really that brutal for Jeff at all because he's only experiencing an emotional pain, but for the judge, I'd say it's pretty rough. Not only is he nearly drowned, but just imagine the smell and taste of getting buried alive in pig guts. I'd take the corn silo over that any day. Your soul never recovered. Now you have the power to sentence his soul straight to hell. So in second place, we have the infamous Needle Pit from Saw 2. I think this trap is so famous and a lot of people probably think about this trap when they think about the Saw franchise. Now the test is actually for Xavier, but as we know, Amanda is the one who ends up in the pit. So Xavier picks up Amanda, throws her in the pit, which just adds to the intensity. It's not like someone willingly jumped in there. She is thrown unwillingly into the pit of needles. And of course, among the needles is a key that opens a door where there is an antidote for the nerve gas that is slowly being released in the house that they're in. Trapped in, I should say. I think this is one of the most ultimate uncomfortable traps to watch. One of the most intense to watch. I cringe every single time, even though I've seen it a million times. Of course, we know if you don't reach the antidote, you could die from the nerve gas being pumped into the house. And of course, there are many smaller traps throughout the house that lead to the antidote to this nerve gas. So a fun fact about this trap is in order to film it, they had to remove every single needle from every single syringe and replace it with a fiber needle, which took several days and they had to use over 120,000 syringes. It will be like finding a needle in a haystack. Number two. The subject of our next trap, like Jeff Denlin, is faced with more of a psychological torture than a physical one. His name is William Easton, and he's a health insurance executive for a company called Umbrella Health. William was responsible for creating the algorithm to determine who the lowest risk individuals are. If he determines that they're unlikely to get sick, he'll offer them coverage. Jigsaw sees this as William deciding who lives and who dies, and decides to give him a taste of his own medicine in a trap called the Gallows. William is persuaded to take hold of two chains, and after a very dark night appearance of Billy the Puppet, is presented with two people on barbed wire nooses. One is his secretary, an older woman with a history of diabetes and a loving family. The other is his file clerk, a young healthy man with no living relatives to mourn his loss. According to William's algorithm, the secretary should be denied coverage and the file clerk should be treated. But when presented with a choice between two colleagues he knows personally, the choice is not quite as easy to make. The trap takes place in a reptile habitat. It's symbolic of the cold-blooded nature of William's decisions. Is this trap fair or winnable? That's one of my gripes with it. Someone has to die here. You could argue that they're all wrongdoers for working at a dirty insurance company, but it's not very fair to the people wearing the new who are really just trying to make a living. Aside from that, I would anticipate that being faced with a traumatizing decision like this would have caused William to reconsider his policies at the very least. Visually, it's nothing special, it's just two people standing there, and while it's probably a painful way to die, it's a lot quicker than a lot of the other traps that put a victim through extended periods of suffering. So it's really just John Kramer's creative method of turning the tables that makes the gallows such a memorable trap. As you can see, the choice is not so clear when you are face to face with the people whose blood will stain your hands. Alright, now for my favorite, favorite saw trap of all time, the spike trap, otherwise known as Cupid's Arrows from Saw 4. And I feel like this one is a controversial one to put first because there are many, many more iconic saw traps, but I just feel so drawn to this one. And like I said in my video where we rank all the Saw movies, Saw 4 has objectively some of the best traps in my opinion. So this trap involves Morgan and Rex who are a married couple and they wake up to realize that they are attached by arrows 
or spikes. And the test is that Morgan finally has the opportunity to break the ties that bind her to her abusive husband. So the catch is in this is as she removes each spike or each arrow from her body, you know, pulls it through, it will slowly make her husband bleed out. So she is impenetrated, uh, is that a word? Through many, many points of her body, however, none of them lethal. Whereas her husband is punctured through major arteries. I just feel like this is such a strong scene to me because of the emotions attached to this couple, even though we hardly know them. It's just something that I feel so drawn to and to watch the intensity and the strength and the independence. I know this is way too deep for just a saw trap, but like just go with it for a second. <laughs> She's finally choosing to break ties with her husband. Is it really just her survival instinct kicking in? Probably, but you know, she didn't really have that going for her when she was with her abusive husband, you know, and he's pulling on the spikes, trying to prevent her from pulling it out. And it's just a very, very intense and like heartbreaking scene in a way. It's just, it's my favorite scene or favorite trap by far. Also, I love the concept of this. This has to be like the most original saw trap in my opinion, and I just love it. The human body is a fascinating organism. This probably comes as no surprise. One of the most iconic, cringe-inducing, well-balanced traps in the history of the Saw franchise comes in Saw 2, and it's called the Needle Pit. Amanda is forced to rummage through piles of syringes, causing many of them to stick into her flesh as she relives her days as an addict while desperately searching for her out. We don't know what was in the syringes, but the assumption is that it's something pretty nasty. Ultimately, she finds the key, but Xavier is slightly too late when it comes to opening the safe, and the whole thing ends up being a loss. The challenge is actually very doable. You would just need to have a lot of willpower to keep pushing through the pile as more and more needles pin themselves into you. But theoretically, once you get the antidote, you'd be able to survive. Could the needle pit effectively transform its subject? We don't actually see the answer because the intended subject never goes through the trap. But I think it's somewhat questionable. Xavier probably already knew that drugs are bad before he became a dealer, and I'm not really sure that being in their shoes for two minutes would cause him to reconsider his career options. At the very least, it might have made a less evil character realize how much drugs can mess up a person's life, but it seems unlikely that it would have any effect. This trap takes place inside of what appears to be a nursery inside the house. When a junkie becomes addicted, their bodies become dependent on the drugs. Just as a baby needs its parents to provide for it, the drug addicts need to keep crawling back to Xavier to get their fix. I can say the punishment probably fits the crime on this one because the amount of needles in the pit is probably comparable to the amount of drugs that Xavier has sold in his lifetime. So Jigsaw is essentially forcing him to go through all of it at once. Does this trap look cool? It definitely looks ugly, but I have to give this one some creativity points for not just being a big hunk of machinery like so many other saw traps are. The yellow lighting in this room is disgusting, but I think it accomplishes its goal to make us feel uncomfortable. The way the needles stick to her is really well done, and I know it makes a lot of saw fans cringe. In fact, I know there are a lot of people who can't even do a single needle, so this trap is truly a trypanophobic's worst nightmare. Where does this land on the pain scale? Probably not super high. At the end of the day, you're just getting poked all over your body. You're not getting flesh ripped out of you, you're not getting burned or drowned, but I'm still gonna make a case for this being one of the most unforgiving traps, because this is one of those jigsaw traps that forces the participant to harm themselves. Many of the other traps are out of the player's hands. Whatever happens to them, happens. The thing with the needle pits and a few other traps in the series is that you have to put yourself in pain to succeed, which goes against what your brain wants you to do. You can see in her reaction how getting stabbed in dozens of places like that really causes the pain to stack up and for Amanda specifically, it's much harder because she has already overcome the life of drugs. She thought it was over, but now she's finding herself being thrown back in with no shoes at that. Now a lot of you have been asking, what did I think of Spiral? Where does it stack up with the other Saw movies? So Sarah and I have created a second video where we rank every installment in the franchise. If you enjoy my content and the topics I talk about, you'll probably want to go ahead and subscribe to Possessed by Horror. I originally found her channel and started talking to her because I found that her reviews tended to line up with my own horror movie taste. So she's become one of the few critics that I actually trust. You'll find our video on the left, but before you go, make sure you subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring the death bell for all notifications, and I'll see you over in that other video, assuming we both survive. I guess if Sarah survives also. I mean, we already made the video, so I think we're good.